today we are going to talk about awareness or mindfulness a lot of us think and feel very good when we achieve that stage where we feel aware and mindfulness about our surroundings and whatever we are doing some people also call it as being in the zone when you are playing something or doing some activity and you really feel happy about it and you really feel very productive about it it's like you are in the flow and you are able to do whatever you are wanting to do in a very smooth process way so how can we be in the zone is what we are going to do today there are three activities which you can do to remain in the zone i'll talk one by one about all the three activities the first is being sensory acute what is the meaning of this it means that if you go out if you see your whole day the way we you know work out in the whole day whatever we do in the whole day we are collecting information that's what we do we collect information and based on our own biases whatever we have gone in the past and all we react to those information if it's a discussion if it's a, if you're seeing a movie if you're seeing a news anything we are collecting information so what are the parts of our body that is collecting information or our consciousness that is collecting information it's our sensory organs all the five sensory organs are collecting information be it our eyesight be it our auditory be it our tongue or the smell be it our feeling touch so all of these five senses are being used to get the gather the information now what we have done is that we have taken all of these five senses for almost granted and we don't even think about it because we have been doing this from childhood so it's it's very normal for us to see that whatever is happening but what happens is that if we become more aware about our senses the kind of information that you gather will change it will become much better because of which your life also will change now if i have to give you an example let's say for example you get a chance to go to a very beautiful market and in that market everything is there whatever you want to buy but you have only a small basket in which you can put the items from that market and you have been given completely free uh you can buy anything without any kind of you know using any kind of money and all you don't need to pay any money but you can only buy whatever the basket can hold now what will you do you will not just put anything into the basket right you will be very careful to put the best things that you want in your life or which can provide you the best comfort whatever you will suddenly start prioritizing your things that you are putting into the basket because it's very very limited the problem is for our sense organs everything is not limited we feel that we can just put anything into it whatever is coming suddenly you see you are writing about about to write a mail in your laptop for your office and something pops up and you start looking into the mail and now in the mail some link has come and you start open the link in the link there is another link and the link keeps going on so because of which you have spent almost around 2 and 1/2 to 3 hours just looking at this and suddenly you realize that oh my god i have not written the mail yet so what i'm trying to tell you here is that we have to be very very careful about the kind of information that we are going to put into our system and this will happen if we start prioritizing our inputs what kind of inputs do you want start getting becoming more aware about it that's the first thing the second way to being more aware is in the sense the equity only how to make our senses more aware is start using one sense to do the work of other sense organ uh, just to make you understand you know you in mahabharat all the pandavas were there and they were learning the art of warfare all the pandavas are there right so in that place they were just having food one day and while they were having food suddenly a gush of wind came and comes and the lamp because of which they were able to see it was you know uh, burnt out so it it got completely dimmed out and it got off 
because of which it was complete darkness so all the pandavas all the five pandavas were waiting for some um, for the brother to you know or for the person to come and switch on the light or put the lamp again they were not eating but suddenly arjun was started hearing that somebody is eating the food and it was bhim bhim was always very much fond of food and he was eating the food so when he asked that bhim how are you eating the food how are you able to see the food so bhim spoke that no my hands know where my mouth is my hands can see where my mouth is so i can easily you know eat food in the night in the dark also so that that sentence got arjun thinking he started thinking oh it means actually his hands our hands can also see or feel where our mouth is in the darkness so he started understanding that okay that means my hands can also find out without using my eyes where the target is so he started practicing in darkness of archery and he started practicing his hitting his targets in the darkness without seeing and slowly slowly he became very very good and proficient in it the idea what i want to mean to say is from here is that our senses are flexible we need to make them more and more flexible by giving them the chance to use each other's work a lot of times you know when we go in a mall or in a market we smell the coffee and that smell itself makes us feel the taste in our taste buds right so our tongue and nose both are interchanging their roles so from today on we'll try to start practicing either in meditation or while walking or while doing any kind of a work how you can start practicing flexibility with your senses how you can become more aware about your senses the way the senses are being used this will make you much easier to prioritize the kind of information that you want otherwise our senses are like mad elephants they can just kind of gather any kind of information whatever is coming in front of them and you will find it very difficult to control it but once you start practicing flexibility of your senses it becomes much more easier for you to control the senses and prioritize what kind of information you want in your life so this is the first thing how to make your senses more acute the second is i'll give an example for you to understand how to use this second part to become more aware you must have seen the blind people at times when they walk in the road or anywhere they are walking they'll be using a walking stick and why do they use the walking stick they try to find out in front of them side by side if there is any kind of a danger in front of them is there is some kind of a hole where they can fall down or they can fell or where they can find some kind of a block which is there which can make their path stop so they check it and then they keep moving they are always using the stick to check around them now from this concept what we can understand is that in our day to day life we very rarely remain balanced whenever we get some kind of information we always get hyper either very ex- active excited happy or sad disappointed angry depending on the kind of information that we get so how to make sure that we remain balanced and even because the more balanced and even you remain the more easier it will be for you to remain aware and mindful so just like how the blind man is using the stick to make aware of house about his surroundings we need to use our feelings our feelings are the best yardstick to understand what we are going through is it good or bad as soon as we see that some information has make our feelings made our feelings bad or it has gone down that means that information is not very very good for us we need to make sure that we go back to the normal state somebody says something to you and suddenly your anger goes up so you need to understand before you go into the whole cycle where because of your anger you get more frustrated anger more frustrated and it takes around 3 4 hours of yours but in the initial part only as soon as you get angry you should put a check system inside you that okay i have got angry that means somewhere something is wrong i need to get into the balance fast otherwise again i'll get in the loop so this kind of a check system will make sure that you are only in a 
awareness mode happy mode where you are able to control your reactions control the information you are getting if you be, keep it unchecked what will happen is that any kind of information will come and it will make your mood bad sad or disappointed or anger and it will create a loop for you which will go on for a long time the idea here is to make sure that we escape that loop as fast as possible without within 5 10 15 minutes whatever is the time that can be used because you have been aware to keep the particular information at bay bay you can think about it you can work on it but you are not going to make it control you for the next 3 4 hours so use your feelings as a yardstick to understand what kind of information is getting into you the third and the final way to being aware is use of sports yes what happens is that whenever we play sports it there are two aspects of any sport the one is the mental aspect and second is the physical aspect physical means the way your body has to move the way you have to sit or the way you have to have a particular posture and the activities that has to happen physically for the particular sport and the second part is your mind because your mind has to also prepare for the sport let's say for example if somebody is playing football when you are playing football you have to make sure that you are in the right place you are running you are taking the ball but at the same time you also have to make sure that where are your team players your mind has to be aware where are your team players where are the opposite players opposition players so that they don't get the ball same goes for all kind of games now what happens this is a very good exercise for us because our mind suddenly is given the task to do all these things at the same time and it feels very much in peace as we practice more and more so once a mind has gone through a regime like this through a practice like this it becomes very easy for us after the game or when you are in normal life to make sure that you can you can control your mind like that only to understand what kind of thinking is going on to what kind of thought process is going on and what kind of physical activities we are doing lot of times as a as a human being we think a lot you know we have we worry a lot we think a lot we keep uh, planning a lot dreaming a lot all of these are different types of thoughts so to be aware about our thoughts what we need to do is we need to play games where our mind has to think a lot and focus normally our thoughts goes from here to there every time right so but when you let's say when you play chess you will see that as a if you if you a person if as a person you think a lot you imagine a lot you will not like to play chess that much your mind will say that no 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 this is too much boring game you have to focus a lot is very very boring and it takes lot of our time and energy because the mind is trying to stay away from putting all of its efforts into one focus it gets very scared to do that so in that case it's very important for us to play chess because what happens is that by playing chess our mind starts getting focused and start thinking into one particular way and the same practice can be done even after the game is over you can keep thinking okay no i want to think only on this process i want to only think on this process so it makes your thoughts more focused and more clear any kind of mind strategy game you can play which helps you to think more and more it can be scrabble it can be chinese checkers it can be chess all of this kind of thoughts will make you focus your mind into one kind of a thought process the second is the physical activity game any kind of a physical activity which you do will help you to make your body and mind to become fast lot of us are very i will not say lazy but maybe you are not very much active in terms of our body we feel it very difficult to keep up our body moving so when you start playing your body suddenly starts get hyper and it has to start doing the practice what has to follow as in the game this will give you much more easy access to your body and control it for faster activity but if you play badminton if you play table tennis if you play football all these games make your body move very fast and this will help you to bring your body and mind into same level where your body also starts behaving in the same fast way like the mind you will see that once you have played this kind of a game after a long time that day you will be sleepy and you will feel very restful while sleeping you will not be able to think too much worry too much before sleeping if that's the normal habit that you have the reason is your mind has already gone through its exercise of thinking a lot 
it does not have the capacity now to think anymore and worry anymore so that's why sports are very important and the kind of sports that you choose also becomes very important so as you can see these three steps can help you to be aware first is to become sensory acute to make your senses very acute and flexible the second is to make sure you have a yardstick emotional yardstick to find out where you are emotionally and make sure that you stay away from any kind of loop that you create which keeps you in a frustration mode the third and the final one is to use a proper sports which can help you balance yourself which can help you to make sure that you are mindful and aware thank you so much god bless you